Right, now we're gonna look at absolute value inequalities. And the differences between equations and inequalities is still pretty much the same, that for equations, we're getting a specific answer, or in this case, we get two answers. But with inequalities, we're saying that there's a range of answers that we're getting. And so how does that work because of it being absolute value? It's actually gonna work pretty similarly to what we just had happen, um, but let's explore it on A and B, and then I'll let you know, you know, here are the steps you do so that if you don't want to have to think as much, you know exactly what the steps are supposed to be. Okay, so this first one says the absolute value of X is less than seven. Well, that means that whatever X is, it has to be less than seven, a positive seven, but what else has to be true about it because of it being absolute value? So if it was just less than seven, we do you know something like this and say, oh, it just goes on forever that way. But there's a point where this isn't gonna work anymore. Like absolute value of six works, absolute value of five works, that's less than seven. Absolute value of zero is zero, less than seven. And then because it's absolute value, even the, well, not even these, like all of these work um, and ev until we get basically to negative seven. And that's because when we get to negative seven and we're asking ourselves, is the absolute value of negative seven less than seven? Well, the answer to that is no, because the absolute value of negative seven is seven and seven is equal to seven, but it's not less than seven. So that means that this is actually a compound inequality that's happening here that we're saying that any number that's between negative seven and seven is a solution for this inequality, but anything that is outside of those two numbers would not be. And so, you know, just briefly thinking about it and say, okay, well, yeah, the absolute value of eight would not be less than seven. Negative eight would be less than seven, but the absolute value of negative eight wouldn't be. So when we, this was supposed to say solve and graph. Good times, good times. Um, so when we look at this, we've, we've graphed it, but do you remember how we write the inequality for this? That x can be anything that's between negative seven and seven. So what we do is we put an x in the middle and then we say negative seven less than x, which is less than positive seven. And this way of writing it together can seem really weird because it feels like those should not both be less than symbols. But you'd read this from the middle. And so that means that you'd go, okay, we're saying x is actually greater than negative seven because of reading it right to left, which is what we have. And then x is less than seven. Um, but that's a reminder of how that works, how we write that. So what about the greater than or equal to that's on B? So if the absolute value of X is supposed to be greater than or equal to five, uh, one part of that hopefully is pretty straightforward. That at five, we need to put a filled in circle and then we need to graph to the right or shade to the right because six works, seven works, eight works, and so on. And if we think through to see if, if there's a place that it'll stop to the right, there's not, because as we get bigger numbers, they're gonna continue to be bigger numbers than what we have to start, which is five. So then what happens with the other side of things? Um, if I absolute value, uh, you know, like negative one, for instance, that's positive one. Positive one is not greater than or equal to five. So we actually have to go all the way over here to negative five and say, okay, well, the absolute value of negative five is going to end up being five, which is greater than or equal to five. And so we're gonna have a dot at negative five. But think about the fact that 
we're not going to say that negative 4, negative 3, and so on work. These middle numbers work. We actually want to say that the numbers to the left work. Negative 6, when you absolute value it, turns into 6, which is greater than 5. And, and so on, going the opposite way. What should happen on, on these, until we start talking about special cases at least, is that either we're going to end up with, uh, with our, our shading going towards each other and doing the middle, or like B, where they're going out. And if I write the inequalities on B, we're saying X is less than or equal to negative 5, or x is greater than or equal to positive 5. So that's the, like, me trying to walk you through and, and get you to, you know, believe me that this is how this, this goes. And now for the this is how you do it, and now you don't have to think as hard about it, um, we're going to do the same thing as we did with equations where we're going to write our inequality twice. Um, so I'm going to drop the absolute value bars and say, okay, y plus 1 has to be greater than 6. And just like with equations, how we had to do a second one, we're going to have to do a second one. Oh, that's not what I meant to write. I have to do a second one. But when we make the 6 negative, we also are going to switch the inequality around. And there is a mathematical reason for that that involves like, how we basically are saying, um, we're basically saying, okay, y plus 1 greater than 6. We're doing like a plus or minus actually on this side. And so we just, it's easier in a lot of ways to say, okay, well, then the negative part of that's going to go to the other side. But when it's an inequality and I am moving a negative over to the other side, I have to flip the inequality around. So that's why that's happening. It also is what's going to make this work out so that they're either going away from each other or going towards each other. So that's convenient. I'm going to minus 1 on this one. So y is greater than 5. And I'm going to minus 1 on this one. So y is less than negative 7. So when you're looking at these, you can graph them kind of separately and say, okay, y is greater than five. That's an open circle on five and that's pointing to the right. So then y is less than negative seven. It's an open circle on negative seven. And then I shade to the left. So that means that this is an or, because if it's in the middle, that's when it's an and. This is an or. And there's actually this cool thing that happens that if you have just the absolute value on the left side and you're looking at, at it, if it's a greater than symbol, it's going to be an or. Um, because think about the fact that we're talking about things that are greater than six, um, and that's gonna be to the right, but greater than, or sorry, less than negative six, that's to the left. So anytime we have a greater than, it's gonna, it should end up being an or. Whereas on the next one, how we have less than, that's going to end up being an and because we're saying that our numbers have to be between two things. So this one is interesting because of the extra negative right here. So I'm going to start off by writing down the first equation and then the second equation, I'm going to flip the inequality and change it to negative. But then as I solve this, remember that when I divide or multiply by a negative number, I have an inequality, I have to flip it around. So 16 divided by negative 8 is negative 2. So I have a is greater than or equal to negative 2. And I do this one. And I divide it by a negative again. So that one also flips. And see how if we hadn't flipped them around, we would end up not having them point towards each other. But because we did what we were supposed to and flipped them, uh, they're going the right way. So a has to be greater than negative 2, but less than and uh, positive 2. And so we've got all these values in between. And we put, you know, solid circles because it's also equal to. Um, and so this is an and. So one way to write it is just to say and. And then the other is to do negative 2 is less than or equal to A, which is less than or equal to positive 2. And that's how we do it. 
thanks for watching